When I did my Chinese liquid metal video, I said that I would perform the same mod on my Raven SER after I had tried and tested it enough with my Dell XPS L502X. Uh, well, I did it and the results ended up great. But I am going to tell you guys right now that you shouldn't do it or at least most of you shouldn't do it. Let's start off first with how I went about doing it though. Before I went on the paces and tore my system apart and slapped it with liquid metal, of course I needed a baseline to compare it to because how else would I know how much better or worse it is performing after. By default, Illigear uses Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut as their thermal paste of choice and I say default because they don't charge for it and if you didn't choose it, uh, then something is wrong with you. I collected numbers from Cinebench R20, both single and multi-core, Blender Benchmark using the BMW Run, and the Crytek CryEngine Neon Noir Ray Tracing Benchmark, allowing the system to cool down to room temperature each time and taking an average reading. The first thing that I noticed when collecting my baseline numbers was just how quickly the CPU would hit 95 degrees Celsius, followed by the steep drop in clock speeds. It's definitely something that Liquid Metal can improve, so with that out of the way, it is time to overhaul the cooling tim. I tear my Raven apart by removing the bottom screws, then undo the screws holding the heatsink in place and clean off the existing cryonaut with some isopropyl alcohol. I start by applying Liquid Metal onto the contact area of the heat pipes first, evenly spreading it with a cotton q-tip around the dye area that I took note of based on the thermal paste imprint. The same treatment is done for the i7-9750H and the RTX 2060 dies, this time being extra careful so as not to get any on the surrounding SMD chips, because that would be a bad time. And this is some foreshadowing of what we will see later. Once satisfied with the application, I put it all back together and I start the system back up and hope to god that it doesn't blow up. And it didn't, so <laughs> Ray. I'm gonna start with the sugar coated stuff first, aka the best case scenario after having installed Liquid Meadow. In Cinebench R20, we see a very noticeable improvement where even at a room ambient temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, the CPU never hit the thermal limit, reaching a maximum of 89 Celsius. Now of course, before this it was maxing out at 95 Celsius but if you're just looking at a 6 degree improvement, it doesn't really tell the whole story as the thermal limit for this CPU is 95 and it will try to keep it below that. What that means is that in the event that the CPU runs at both the same power limit and clock speeds, the thermal difference will actually be larger than just 6 degrees Celsius. Instead, what the chip did was that it took that extra thermal headroom to clock itself higher for longer, and so we actually get better multi-threaded and single-threaded scores, and in fact the only thing that was stopping us from getting higher results was the power limit on the chip that didn't want to exceed 60 watts long term. This is very evident in the first graph where we can see that the CPU ran at roughly 73 watts for one minute around 3.65 GHz where it hit that maximum of 89 Celsius before finally settling at 60 watts and running at 3.45 GHz with the temperature never exceeding 84 Celsius for the rest of the benchmark. Now of course if random numbers don't really mean anything to you, how about time instead? In the Blender BMW benchmark run, the liquid metal laptop ran 30 seconds faster and didn't overheat or thermal throttle at all, unlike before. So you can imagine that if you're someone who has a high render heavy workflow, once you start rendering 2, 3, 10, 20 and maybe above render passes, you're going to start saving a lot of time and maybe even get an extra lunch break. Moving on to the Neon Noir benchmark, we see a similar occurrence where because the CPU and GPU is allowed to clock higher and faster, the benchmark results that came out in the end were about 100 points faster than before and in no circumstances did the GPU thermal throttle. Uh, now these are all great results, but this is the part where I get real with you. A lot of things went wrong before it got right and it nearly went really wrong. Where do I start? The first time that I applied liquid metal onto the laptop, 
I was extremely cautious about not putting too much that I ended up putting way too little and that ended up with my temperature spiking all the way up to 95 on both the CPU and GPU the moment that I ran my benchmarks and stress tests. After a while, I revisited the laptop again after having figured this out and this time I was a bit more generous with my application and bear in mind that I still made sure to be extremely careful as to not get any of the liquid metal on the surrounding SMDs. The laptop booted up perfectly fine and stress tested extremely well. But suddenly, my Neon Noir stopped working, the RTX 2060 stopped showing up in hardware info, and before I could shut down and try and minimize the damage and remedy the issue, I got a blue screen of death uh, with DirectX, and this gave me a mini heart attack, I assure you. On taking the laptop apart, I didn't notice any immediate issues and everything looked fine, but I was still convinced that there was an electrical short somewhere. I did notice a bit of leakage on the side of the die, but it wasn't touching anything and so I just cleaned that off, but it wasn't until I took an electronic microscope to the area that I saw it clearly. There were microscopic bits of liquid metal that somehow reached the resistors, they were kind of like little specks of powdered metal and they were just congregating around it and in order for me to clean them off I had to use a toothbrush with extremely fine bristles, a plastic wedge and isopropyl alcohol to clean out the resistors completely. I reassembled the machine after and booted it up and it tested and worked perfectly fine but the moment that I put it down on the table just a little bit too hard. The laptop just froze in its place and this gave me my second mini heart attack. Once again, I tore the laptop apart and this time around after checking that the resistors didn't once again get compromised, I removed a lot of liquid metal that I applied to the point where the surface didn't look like it was um, rough or and metallic or with miniature beads of metal all over but just a thin and smooth enough layer. This was apparently the magic formula as currently to date, my laptop is working perfectly fine, thank god, and the results that I showed you above are from this application. Now, I will admit that a lot of issues that I encountered were because of my inexperience in using and applying liquid metal, but I can assume that most people will be trying it for their first time might even make the same mistakes, especially if they're doing it on a laptop rather than a desktop chip where it's usually the IHS to the code plate instead of uh, how in a laptop it's the uh, die to the code plate. Still, if anything, I want this video to be a bit of a word of caution if you do decide to try this on your machine, on your own, as things can go wrong. And there are, of course, risk factors involved. If you get someone with experience or a professional to do it however, I'm pretty sure that the results will amaze you. As for me though, I think that the next time that, you know, I would try something like this, I might just use conformal coating on the surrounding chips. But again, I think that the best thing is just to get it right. Anyway, yeah, um, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm happy with the results, but I can't exactly recommend you guys to do it. If you like this video, give it a like. If you tried Liquid Metal before, uh, let me know in the comment section down below how that went. Share, subscribe, stay notified uh, for any new videos that come out with the bell icon. Um, my name is Yang the Tech Rodent, and yeah, I'm I'm so happy that third time's the charm. I'll see you guys in the next video.